I've been getting questions a lot about, should I take on a PhD? Should I become a doctorate student? Well, I'm here to tell you that you should not ever consider getting a PhD. Okay, that's a little bit of hyperbole. So some people obviously have PhDs, I have a PhD, but I do not recommend it for the vast majority of people. I don't even recommend going to college for most people, but especially a PhD. So let's talk about my 10 reasons why you should not get a PhD. The first one, which is should be the most important one and the reason you should not consider a PhD, mental stress. Mental stress is one of the things that's plaguing academia the most. You have so much work to do and it's a very stressful environment. That should be enough to consider not becoming an academic. But if that's not enough, let's consider the second reason why you should not get a PhD. So the second reason is opportunity cost. So I'll use myself as an example because I'm pretty representative, at least in this department, is that we make around $25,000 roughly a year. Now let's consider a person who graduated with a bachelor's in let's say computer science. It's not the best choice, but it's the one that I know the most. They usually make, let's say around $100,000 a year out of undergrad. So if we think about a PhD, someone who goes straight PhD, and that's not always the case. Sometimes you have to take a master's first, but I'm gonna, again using myself as an example here. We have a scenario where a PhD is making 25K a year and the bachelor's student who just graduated is making 100K a year. So PhD PhDs take around five years, roughly, let's say. They can take longer or less, it depends. So that means that the PhD student is missing around $375,000 in opportunity costs by pursuing a PhD. And you may think, okay, there must be some reason, maybe a long-term career reason, for why you would want to do a PhD. The thing is that PhDs are not paid very much more than than masters or bachelors. And that should be another reason why you should not consider a PhD. But if that's not enough, let's consider number three. So for the third reason is you have to take extra classes. And a lot of people don't want to take more classes because you want to do research. But at some places like Arizona State University, you have to take additional classes. And if you don't like taking classes, well, a PhD might not be for you. If that's not enough, let's consider the fourth reason. The fourth reason, which is related to mental stress, the imposter syndrome. So if you don't know what this is, the imposter syndrome is the idea that all of these other people in this area are so successful. I'm just an imposter. Someone screwed up. How am I actually here? Why am I here? I am not nearly as good as all these people. And this is a fallacy most of the time. <laughs> Some people really are cranks, but most people who are in the PhD student position or professor position really do have a reason that they're there. There's a whole vetting process for each one of those. And you will always have this feeling. I have this feeling every single day that there are all these professors who are just vastly better than I am, even though it's not actually true. And I know that it's not true, but it still plagues me nonetheless. And if you're the type of person who is not able to take criticism in that way, then you probably shouldn't consider getting a PhD because throughout the entire PhD, you are going to feel that process. Even if you're one of the best academics of all time, you're still going to feel that because everyone's experience in academia is different. No one's experience is the same. Everyone takes a different path, either more teaching or more research or more of both or more of service. It even depends across fields. So try to not compare yourself against other people if you're getting a PhD, but if you have any issue with that, don't get a PhD. If that's not enough, let's consider the next reason. The fifth reason is that there are very few job opportunities other than academia that PhDs get that no one else can get. You may think, okay, the person who gets a PhD should be able to get more job opportunities, but that's just not true. In academia, that's pretty much required at this point. It used to not be true. You can get away with a master's and be a professor, but that's just not true anymore. So if you want to be an academic, you have to get a PhD, unfortunately. So this video should really be about why you shouldn't become an academic slash get a PhD because those are kind of similar. But here, there's not really much of a job opportunity cost in getting a PhD. If that's not enough, let's consider the next reason. The sixth reason is related to the last one in that jobs that require PhDs are almost always academic. And that's just the way that the world works. 
If you're getting a PhD, you have to be working on some research problem. And if you're doing a research problem, that's academia. That's what academia is. That's one of the reasons why you should not get a PhD. If that's not enough, let's consider the seventh reason. So the seventh reason is that sometimes you have to do some extra TA duties. So if you don't like teaching at all, you probably shouldn't be a professor. <laughs> you can probably be like a research assistant or something where you only do research, but if you don't like teaching at all, don't become a professor. <laughs> if you like teaching, then even, you still probably shouldn't be a professor. You can probably be like an instructor or something, but if you hate teaching, don't be a professor. And there's gonna be additional duties that you have to do, usually, when you're a PhD student. And if you don't like doing those things, don't try to become a PhD student, unless you can find a PhD position where you don't have to do those things. But that's relatively unlikely at this point. If that's not enough, let's consider the eighth reason. The eighth reason is that you have to write a lot. And by write a lot, I mean you have to produce a dissertation. So dissertations usually are 100 to 200 pages, sometimes more, sometimes less, but it's a lot of writing, a lot of writing. You might be writing grants, you might be writing additional papers that go to journals and conferences. You may be writing up memos within the department. There's a lot of writing that happens. And if you're not a writer, don't become a PhD. If that's not enough, let's consider the ninth reason. The ninth reason is related to one of the biggest fears in at least America, which is public speaking. And if you're an academic, you must give talks at some point. You need to be able to communicate your research ideas to other people in some kind of public format. I mean, COVID is kind of ruining everything for that, but it used to be before COVID that you had to go to conferences and give presentations in front of other people. You, If you're gonna be a professor, you have to teach in front of other people. And if you have a deathly fear of public speaking, don't become an academic because you're gonna be doing that all the time. And a lot of people don't like public speaking at all. So don't become an academic if you hate public speaking. If that's not enough, let's consider the 10th reason. And the 10th and final reason is that there's a lot of extra overhead. I've talked about this and how I got a PhD video. So the basic overhead that you have to do when you're considering a PhD or during it is that you're gonna have to work with committees a lot. And by committees, I mean your dissertation committee and some other committees. You're gonna have to take a comprehensive exam that's in some form. You're gonna have to write a proposal of some research. And that's one of the things that I didn't like during my PhD was that I needed to work with my committee quite a bit in trying to allocate a time in order for all of them to meet at the same time. And that's vastly harder than any research problem you'll ever solve. And so if you don't like doing that type of thing, don't like trying to schedule things. And if things don't work out, you have to work in another semester and then potentially lose opportunity cost then a PhD is not for you. If you made it through all 10 of these reasons, then congrats, you probably should get a PhD. If you agreed that one of those reasons was just too much for you, do not get a PhD. I would imagine that the vast, vast, vast majority of you will not consider a PhD after this point. And I think that's a good thing because I don't want anyone to be led down the garden path about something that they don't actually want to do, which is getting a PhD. So the, the whole point of this channel is to convey the truth of academia. And one of the truths is that most people should not get a PhD because it's leading people toward a goal that they should not get. We can't mislead people about what they actually want. If you want to be an academic, then please, please, please get a PhD. That's the thing that you should do. But if you don't want to be an academic, then the vast majority of you should not get a PhD. Hopefully that was interesting. Leave thoughts about getting a PhD down in the comments down below. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.